Hello and welcome to Oscar Sunday. We are here at the Roger Neal and Marianne Lai Oscar viewing dinner party. In just a few moments, stars will be walking on this red carpet and we will be speaking to them about how they started their careers and what they're excited about. Let's take a look. We are now here with Tom Michael Mulligan. He co-founded the New Hope Film Festival. Tom, can you tell me a little bit about what went into founding a film festival? Well, it started over a breakfast conversation 12 years ago in New Hope, Pennsylvania. I still live there before I moved to California with a friend of mine. And uh, it just... We started talking about things and about how hard the business is to break in and get discovered. And I said, you know, I always thought, you know, New Hope would be a great place to have a film festival. And lo and behold, I came back to California a week later. Doug called me and said, I, co I, uh, I, uh, he went to an attorney and he, he set it up for the festival. He's like, we're going to do it. Let's do it. So his background was uh, Wall Street 12 years, Wharton School of Business MBA, brilliant guy. My background is 40 years in this industry. And so I knew this part, and that's how we set it up over the next year, over the phone. We are now here with Rico E. Anderson from Star Trek. Hey! Rico, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So how is it like being part of such an enormous industry, such as Star Trek? It, it, was, pretty, it was pretty amazing. Um, you know, part of the character that I had to wear, it, it, he had this, this prosthetic makeup on. So you don't even see my face. So a lot of the acting had to come out of the eyes, any like, you know, body movements that I did or something like that. But it was so much fun. I loved wearing prosthetic makeup and performing like that. It, 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 it's, it's almost like putting on a suit or, or a dress, you know, you, it puts you in a certain way of moving and acting and being. So it's great. It's fun. We are now here with Sophia Stewart. Sophia is the owner of The Matrix. Can you tell me about your experience Terminator. with that and Terminator? Yes. Uh, Warner Brothers offered me $30 million for the shooting script to the fourth installment. If they don't have the real Matrix, it's a generic like the Terminator that you guys saw, Dark Fate. So everybody needs to get the Matrix 4. It's on Amazon.com since 2010. I won the second lawsuit, $3.5 in liens and almost a half a million in attorney fees. That's right. And what can we expect from the next installment of The Matrix? I am going with virtual penal systems and virtual skateboards and virtual motorcycles and so forth. So, and holograms. Hologram clones and holograms. Serena, thank you for joining me. Yes, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I love being at the Hollywood Museum and celebrating the Oscars every year. So you are a singer and songwriter. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got inspired to write a song? Well, I'm in a very happy relationship right now, and often you think that you have to have a breakup to write a song about something. So I always kind of grab from the people around me, sometimes, sometimes my friends, my family, whatever they're going through, or just writing about picking an emotion and trying to write about that and whatever comes to mind. I also feel like music really inspires me a lot, so whether the chord progression or the rhythm, that really inspires whatever the song turns out to be about. But music is really therapy for me, so whatever does happen, it's happening for a reason. Whatever I'm writing about kind of tells me something about myself that I didn't know before. And can you tell me a little bit about some of your songs and where we can hear them? Yeah, so exactly a year ago I released my first public single called Gold, which is fitting for the Oscars, so go check that out. And then on February 19th, which is in about a week, you can download my song called Car Talks. And I think my sound's really just like a chill drive down the PCH on a perfect beach day. So it's just really nice and chill, like Amy Winehouse meets Hozier. I write all my own stuff, all the lyrics, I play guitar, and you can listen to everything, and you can download it on Spotify and iTunes and everywhere, and I really hope you guys like it. Awesome, and you are also an actress. Yes. So how does your singing background really play into your role as an actress? Well, 
I, even when I go out on auditions, I find that the things that I book the most have something to do with music. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, I booked a feature film called Summertime Dropouts where I play the lead guitarist in a pop punk rock band. And I play this amazing character named, named Lucy, who's this spunky, just like awesome punk rock guitarist. And then I also, we just finished a short film cycle for the film called Nasty Habits. And Alison Arm is an amazing female director. and. Really, I have her to thank for all the uh, credentials that I've received and awards that I've received from that movie. And I also play a singer-songwriter trying to make her way to Los Angeles in that short um, thriller horror film. I am now here with a legendary Persian music singer, Andy. Andy, thank you so much for joining me here. My pleasure. It's great to find one of my youngest fans. <laughs> So Andy, last a couple weeks ago, you got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What was that like for you? Unbelievable! It's beautiful, and like Shaini said, this is my wife, Shaini. Hi. She's also a singer-songwriter, and uh, today is a beautiful day. We're at the Hollywood Museum. I'm receiving an Icon Award, which is unbelievable because I grew up with Hollywood movies. Even being born in Iran, we grew up with Hollywood movies, and I'm just so happy to be here. It's a great day. 2020 is a great year. And as an Iranian singer, how does it feel to be recognized as such a hallmark of America? Well, I feel American also, because I'm an Iranian, Armenian American. I've lived in Los Angeles for 41 years, and I'm all of them, and it's just a great feeling. Some people don't have even one country, I have three. <laughs> it's beautiful. And Shani, as a singer-songwriter yourself, how is it like being part of this power couple of music? I mean, it's, it's great. We get to do a lot of fun uh, collaborations that hit people all over the world and being based in America, but we have, you know, great fans all over the place, and so we get to we get to experiment and see what they like and here we're here celebrating movies we've gotten to do a lot of things for movies and there's a lot more license for creativity with movies so we get to really experiment and combine a lot of our different backgrounds so it's 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 exciting it's fun but you're right as a as a team not only we write we produce we sing together but we also have a charity for dogs. We save dogs, and uh, it's called VoicesOut.org. Uh, we we are very small, but we have been very successful, and it's just great to live in California, where all these great laws of uh, animal uh, what's welfare. the word welfare is happening, and we're proud to be a small part of it. So, Jeremy, thank you so much for being with it's me here a today. Can you tell me how it felt to be a part of such a popular sitcom? Being a part of a sitcom like Growing Pains was very, first of all, it was an honor. But it was crazy being that young and having that popularity because you didn't really notice it. I mean, it didn't seem real almost when you're that young. Uh, the first time somebody comes up and wants your autograph, you're very confused. You know, it doesn't make any sense. And then later on, it becomes more normal and it becomes your life and you don't really look at it as awkward or different. It just kind of is. I always tried to be as friendly and as personable as I could with the fans and the people who wanted to come up. That was always the most awkward part to get used to for me at first was because I didn't understand why anybody cared. I'm just me. And when you were a very young child, were you always interested in theater and interested in acting and playing different characters? I kind of always, I, I didn't do theater really until I started learning acting and doing acting classes. But I always walked around the house reciting lines from my favorite shows, for singing from Broadway shows that I loved that I listened to with my mom, um, Brady Bunch, Dukes of Hazard, all of those shows that I watched as a kid, I could recite full scenes from and I'd walk around the house acting them out. So that was what kind of gave my mom a clue that maybe I might 
have an interest in performance. Mr. Papadopoulos is a former Trump advisor and has just released a new book in March. Can you tell me a little bit about that book? Sure. The book is called Deep State Target, and it basically is a chronology of the events from 2015 through 2017 that resulted in the Comey investigation, the Robert Mueller hoax, the, sh the impeachment investigations that it recently just ended, and the impact of those events moving forward on the 2020 election. And regarding our Congresswoman, Katie Hill, she is just a couple districts away from us. She recently stepped down from her position. Do you have any plans on maybe running for that position in the future? So I currently am running for the 25th Congressional District. Uh, we have our primary coming up in March. It's an incredibly tough uphill battle because, as we know, California and California politics are worse than Chicago politics if you're a Republican, and that's where I'm originally from. There's a tremendous amount of grassroots uh, support for my candidacy. We're changing things up. My, my competitors are terrified of my run. I have my wife, Simona, with me on the trail. And uh, in just a couple of weeks, we will know who gets through this primary. So I'm very excited and waiting for those results. We had so much fun at this amazing event and want to give our congratulations to all of the winners tonight. For KBF 6, I'm Eva Donash.